It takes a bit of courage and trust to shoot like this, not to focus at all before you hit the shutter. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I'm going to take a no focus challenge here in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. And it literally means that I'm not going to focus my camera at all before taking my pictures. You could also call it a fixed focus challenge or zone focus challenge. I'm going to set my lens to a certain distance and stop far enough to about f11 and uh, let the depth of field cover the rest. This is an old shooting or focusing method used by many photographers, myself included, back in the film days before autofocus. And my camera setup today is the Sony A7 Mark IV, which I'm using to film this video, and that's why I can't show you the camera right now, and the 7 Artisans 35mm f2 fully manual lens. And the reason I chose this combo today is that it's similar to uh, those film combos that we used to use back in the film days. We had a 35 millimeter camera, which is um, the negative size is the same as the full frame sensor. And then we had a 35 millimeter fixed uh, or prime lens. Some photographers preferred a 28 millimeter lens, but uh, very similar setup anyway. And I wanted to see if this uh, shooting focusing method is still valid these days with modern digital cameras. Because believe it or not, the depth of field with a modern full frame digital camera is not the same as with a 35 millimeter film camera. Believe it or not. And now you're probably thinking that I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm going to clarify this a little bit later in this video and I'm using the manual exposure mode with auto ISO and I'm controlling the shutter speed according to the situation. If I want to freeze action, motion, then I'll choose of course a faster shutter speed and if I can tolerate or if I even want some motion blur in my picture then I choose a slower shutter speed. And this method inevitably leads to pretty high ISO values even in bright daylight because if my aperture is f11 and my shutter speed is something like 250 or 500 even then uh, even in bright daylight the ISO value easily goes to 400 or even 800. The reason we used this shooting or focusing method in the past with manual focus lenses and cameras is that it is really, really difficult, if not impossible, to precisely focus manually in a split second. Yes, I could focus really well manually back in the day. Now I'm rusty, I'm spoiled by the modern autofocus cameras and many other photographers also used to be really good at manual focusing. But still, if you had to do it in a split second, it was more instinct and muscle memory and it's not possible to verify the focus by looking through the viewfinder in a split second. It is just not possible. So we set our lens to a certain focusing distance and we stop down far enough to f11 or even f16 and then we let the depth of field cover the focusing. Besides, back in the day the standards were different. No one expected every photo to be tack sharp like we do today. If you look some of the pictures from that era, many of the pictures actually, they are not tack sharp. The focus is slightly off. But it was okay back in the day because no one expected a human being to be able to focus precisely in every situation, especially in uh, like uh, street photography or some other fast action situations. Today we have really capable AI driven autofocus systems in our cameras and most of the time we get great results but even the best autofocus can miss sometimes. And also you have to be able to tell your autofocus what is the main subject in the frame. 
Sometimes it's really easy. If there's one human being in the frame, your autofocus probably recognizes that human being and uh, you don't have to do anything. But let's say there are many people in the frame at different distances. You somehow have to uh, be able to put the focus point on the, the main subject, the person that is your main subject in the frame. And uh, if one of the persons is very close to the camera, and that is not your main subject and if your camera focuses on that person very close to the camera even if you are shooting at f11 you have plenty of depth of field that may still not be sufficient to cover your main subject the person who is standing a little bit further in the frame further away from your camera because your camera focuses on that person uh, very close to your camera and if you have to manually change your autofocus point uh, that can take several seconds with some cameras with some cameras it only takes a split second but if it takes more than a few seconds it's a long time if there's something happening in front of you in front of your camera but with a zone focusing your camera is always ready you literally just point and shoot and fire away and your camera is always ready there is no delay at all and it's impossible to miss the focus no matter what the subject is At this point I'd like to remind you of the workshop I'm organizing in Helsinki in August 2023 with my friend Peter Forsgaard. The workshop is about storytelling with multiple pictures and I guarantee you after the workshop you're gonna be a much better photographer than before. Uh, please check out the link down below for more details and sign up as soon as possible. We'd love to see you in Helsinki in August. 2023. Earlier in this video I told you that uh, the depth of field with the digital full frame digital camera is not the same as with the 35mm film camera. And that is because film by nature is softer than the picture from a digital camera. Especially with the films like um, Kodak Tri-X or Ilford HP5 or similar films that have a relatively large grain structure. The softness covers minor focusing errors and therefore allows a little bit more depth of field at the same aperture. And if I remember correctly, with Fuji cameras you can choose whether the depth of field scale in the viewfinder represents film depth of field or digital depth of field. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have my Fuji camera here so I can't double check it, but uh, I remember Fuji cameras have that kind of a feature. To be able to use zone focus properly you pretty much need a fully manual lens like for example this uh, 7 Artisans 35mm f2 with a proper manual focusing ring with hard stops and maybe even a depth of field scale like this one has. With uh, most uh, autofocus lenses it's really uh, difficult to do because the focus ring just spins indefinitely as long as you rotate it and there are no hard stops and no focusing scale. Some autofocus lenses have so-called manual focus clutch and that helps a lot but even that is not uh, as good as uh, this kind of a fully mechanical manual lens. It takes a bit of courage and trust to shoot like this, not to focus at all before you hit the shutter. It feels really weird and you'll think uh, that nothing is going to be in focus. But you have to trust that it works. And of course with a 35mm lens on a full frame camera you can't get everything in focus from let's say one meter to infinity. But for example in my case I set the lens to about three meters and that at f11 gave me enough depth of field in that focusing zone that I mostly use when I shoot my street photos.
this of course works with every camera, every format. I'm just using my full frame camera for the reasons I mentioned at the start of this video. If you are using a smaller sensor camera like Micro Four Thirds, you can get away with the uh, apertures like f5.6 or f8. No need to stop down as far as with a full frame camera because you have more depth of field uh, with the same angle of view. I highly recommend you to try this if you have a suitable lens for your camera. It feels very very liberating to shoot like this once you get the hang of it and you learn to trust that it works. Uh, and even if your camera has the fastest autofocus system there is, this is still a lot faster and uh, it feels so easy and free not to think about focusing at all. And of course, if you have already tried this, please do leave a comment down below and share your experiences. Of course, this is not suitable for every situation. Low light being one of those situations, because your ISO values will go crazy high at f11, no matter what shutter speed you use, or at least if you use any shutter speed that you can hand hold comfortably. Also, if you're looking for technical perfection, this is not uh, a suitable shooting or focusing method. But if you're shooting street, the technical perfection is not uh, the top priority. Uh, your top priority is to capture exciting uh, situations on the street, exciting compositions and compositions and situations that require you to work extremely quickly in some uh, situations at least. But this is definitely worth a try, especially if you are into street photography. It is so liberating, so quick to shoot without thinking about focusing at all. And who knows, maybe this can change your street photography forever. I hope you found this video useful and entertaining. And if this was helpful, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll definitely see you in the next video.